Hi everyone, it's Shayna with Dancing Daisy Designs and today I'm here to work on this beautiful buffet piece. This is an authentic vintage piece which I really love. It's even got wooden wheels and it's got the little keyholes where the key used to go and even though I don't have the key, I think that's a really cool detail and so I'm really excited about this piece. It's solid wood and it's pretty banged up so it definitely needs a cool paint job to bring it back into something that somebody would want to put in their home. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a really good cleaning. I actually already started on the top and I don't know if you can see this, but look at how dirty that is. Isn't that gross? <laughs> so yeah, I think I'm going to give it like maybe two or three overs on this to make sure we get it really nice and clean. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Today I'm going to be painting with Wise Owl Chalk Synthesis Paint. This is what it looks like. It's kind of glary. There you go. And I'm trying out this paint for the first time. I'm really excited about it. I'm really, really hoping I love it. And um, I guess, so it's chalk paint. I think the synthesis part is that it has minerals in it. And it is a... Um, non-toxic zero VOC paint and so it's safe to use in your home around your kids and your pets so I definitely love that and I just received it and it shipped very nicely it has these little these little clips on it which is really that's really good it makes sure that your paints not going to spill in your box and make a big old mess on the way here so you're sure that you're that you're gonna get your your paint in one piece. So let's just pop those off. If I could get it. Okay, the first one came off easy. Oh, there we go. All right, open it up and see what we've got in here. The color that I picked was re is Relic. And it's kind of like a mossy green with gray in it. This is the color, so it's a nice, I don't know, I guess gray-green, and loving that, and let's see, it doesn't really have a strong smell at all, it uh, smells just like any other non-VOC chalk paint that I've used, so that's great, and I'm going to use my zebra brush, it's a flat brush angled brush because we've got mostly a flat surface here so I decided this was the best brush for this project and um, something else I do I do leave my drawers in um, on this project I'm thinking of doing kind of like a lighter tone in the middle where that it fades out to a darker so we'll have this nice relic color and then maybe something a little lighter and we'll um, we'll kind of blend that where the drawers are. I think that'll look really nice. So that's the plan. So let's get painted and see how it goes. Oh, it's going on real nice. Looks like the coverage is going to be good. So that's great. Oops, got a whole bunch of paint in my little hole there. So. Alright, we're back with a nice dry piece. I actually waited overnight for the first coat to dry because after I finished painting the front and the sides, I looked at it and I thought, wow, I really, really like the natural wood with this color. And so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and strip and stain the top instead of painting it. Um, I have in my stash here um, it's a Minwax product. It's a Jacobean, Jacobian, Jacobean. Not sure how to say that, but anyway, it's kind of a, a darker, darker wood color, very similar to what's already on the top, with I think a little less red tones in it. And so I'm going to go ahead and use that on the top. And um, normally I would have went ahead and stripped and stained the top first. Um, that way I don't get any dripping down onto my nice paint job, but 
Sometimes things don't always go in the order that you would like. So after I finish my uh, painting the body of the dresser, I'll tape it off really good before I work on the top. That way I don't mess it up. So to get started here, um, I actually, a little tip here, I stored my brush in a little baggie overnight instead of washing it because brushes hold a lot of paint and if you went and washed it out in between every coat then you're losing a lot of paint so what I do is I just stick it in a little baggie and I have these small ones they're not really full size for the whole brush to fit in so what I do is I stick it in and I close it as tight as I can wrap it around and then tape it that way we don't get any air in there so there's no or minimal drying out some people store it in the refrigerator um, you could do that too and that will help so a little tip with keeping your brushes um, nice and moist in between coats so what I'm gonna do is we're gonna start on the second coat here and we're gonna use a mister bottle this is something that beauticians use because you just get a fine mist when you spray it like a continual mist. So we're just gonna wet it a little bit to reactivate the undercoat, which I don't know. I haven't used this paint before, so we'll see how, how that works, if this is gonna if this technique is gonna work out well. So um, as a refresher, um, we're gonna go ahead and use some um, Wise Owl Antique Villa, which is kind of like a creamy white. And we're gonna use that. We're just gonna do just a little bit of shading where the drawer pulls go and then down the middle of this one um, just to bring in some texture oh I guess texture isn't the right word just to bring to bring in some definition to give it some something to look at something fun instead of just a plain blue dresser or buffet so let's get started with that so we're just going to spray it with a little bit of mist and put a second coat on of the of the relic so and I have to say I'm pretty happy with how well the first coat went on it had great coverage and this is nice and smooth when I'm painting it on and um, really good paint I like this paint so go ahead and get that nice coat on there and I think we're gonna work in sections I think that will be easier and what you want to do is when you're gonna do this technique you want to do it over wet paint and oops I got a little bit on my area where I'm gonna do my wood so it's water-based I'm just gonna take a damp towel and wipe it right off no problem so we've got that on now let's open up our antique villa our nice creamy white and because I'm gonna be doing a blending technique Ooh, that's a nice color. It looks pretty white from there, but it's got just a little bit of creaminess to it. And I'm gonna pour pour a little bit of paint on a paper plate. That way I don't mix, because this paint is wet and I'm gonna put white over the blue. It is gonna mix it on my brush, so I don't wanna contaminate my whole little pint of paint here. So I'm just gonna put a little bit on a plate. Wow, that's thick paint. Look at that. Nice. And I'm using a clean brush to go in with my white. Let me just clean up some of this excess on the edges here. And pop the top back on there so I don't does it dry out. I'm gonna wet my brush just a little bit. Okay. All right. We're just gonna take a little bit of the white, not too much, and we're just gonna start putting it in the middle there. We're just kind of feathering it in. And because this is a small area, it's a little hard. I should have got a smaller brush, but this one's gonna work out just fine. And you just kind of keep doing back and forth like this, horizontal and up and down and that's going to give you a nice blend so it doesn't really seem to be pooling all the way underneath to the undercoat which is nice 
and um, so I'm not getting any like pulling any of the wood back through so I really like that so let's give it a little bit more water and just give it a light we're going really light with our brush here just kind of blending it in how's that look I like the color that we're at, but it's a little too square for me on the edges. So I'm gonna go back with just a little bit of my blue. I'm just gonna put a little bit more blue in there. And I think I'm gonna pour a little on the plate because I don't wanna contaminate my blue with the white. So just a little bit. Okay, so I'm gonna use that. Little bit more blue on the edge here and blending it. Okay. It's looking pretty good. Seems like I got a little bit too much white there, so let's just back over it with the blue. This white really does saturate the blue pretty quickly, which is okay. okay. And I am working in sections because you want to do this while the paint is wet for the best results. So that's why I'm doing one drawer at a time. So I'm going to do the little drawers and then the big drawers one piece. And I think that's going to give us our best results. doesn't it give it a nice effect it's not just like one flat color on the top it just really brings some life to it gives some gives some breath to it I really really like that so I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna clean up where I got it on my wood part on my top and see how easy it just wipes off this is great yes and I really like this paint. I have to say, the white is very pigmented and saturated, which is wonderful. So, I mean, I barely used any of that. You know, I put a glop of it on my plate. Well, I don't know. You can't see because it's white on a white plate. But I didn't use very much of it at all, just like the tiniest little bit. And doing this whole dresser front and sides, two coats, I only used about a quarter of this so not very much paint at all so this paint goes a long way I have to say overall I'm very very happy with this paint I'm sure I've said that like five times during this video but I really like it a lot so I will be using this paint brand again on the regular and I do recommend it so um, it's Wise Owl chalk synthesis paint and let's see it's probably wiseowlpaint.com so very good paint like it a lot and so I'm gonna go ahead and let this dry I'm gonna be thinking about what hardware I want to put on this I'm really hoping to find hardware that fits the same holes um, since I didn't I didn't plug the holes 
um, with wood filler and you know start over new so I'm really gonna be looking for hardware with the same hole profile and then I actually can't find I know I have stripper somewhere but I can't find it so I'm gonna go buy some of that and um, and then so probably tomorrow we'll be continuing on this project covering the the front and the sides to protect it stripping the top a little bit of sanding and then stain and polyurethane all right, it's time to take this uh, old varnish off of this uh, buffet so that we can sand it a little bit and get a nice stain on the top. So I got this uh, citrus strip is what I'm gonna use to take that off. And this is a paint and varnish stripping gel, a no methylene chloride or NMP. I don't know what those are, but if it says on the bottle, it must be a bad thing to have that in there. So I figured, um, yeah, let's get this one. And I've used this one before, actually. Um, I don't like using chemicals, but this one worked well. So we're going to use this. I've got my heavy gloves and just a cheap chip brush to use for this project. And then a little towel just in case I get messy. So let's get started. I'm actually going to be wearing a mask too because I don't want to breathe this stuff in at all. So let's suit up. Okay. This uh, stripping gel says, oh, oh, well that opened easy. It says that it takes about 30 minutes to, you could leave it on for up to 24 hours. So that's pretty, <laughs> that's a pretty broad range, but Hopefully it works fast in this case. So I'm just gonna pour a little bit on here. It says to put on a thick coat. So I'm just gonna pour some on to get started. And we're just gonna paint a nice thick coat on. dry out but I want to make sure I have enough on for so I could get it in one shot so that looks pretty good we're gonna leave that for probably an hour or so and then we'll check it and see if it's ready to clean off okay we're back it's only been about 10 minutes but the stripper started to look like it was drying out so I decided to come back test it out and see how we're doing and I scraped a big old chunk of it off. It looks like it's working. So we're gonna go ahead and scrape it and see what we've got. So, yeah, maybe it's a little bit early for this. Let's see. But we are getting some nasty stuff up. Can you see that? You know, it actually looks like some of it is still in there pretty good. Maybe we're a little premature. Let's stop and put some more stripper there and wait. Let's follow the directions. What a great idea. All right, the mineral spirits are all dry and evaporated off the top. And so now we can get on to the next step, which is going to be um, doing a light distressing on the front. And the way I'm gonna do that is just with a damp rag. But before I get to that, I wanna share with you the plan. The plan <laughs> has changed, which um, it can pretty frequently whenever you're doing creative projects like this. Um, I removed all of the stain and the, the old lacquer off the top and I really like how it looks as is. I don't want to restain it or do anything else to it. I just like it 
just like this. Nice rustic look on the top. I think it looks great. And so I'm gonna, I'm just gonna leave it like that. Um, I was thinking of using a polycrylic to cover the top. Sorry about the glare there. And, um, but the only one I have is a clear satin, and I just like the flat look of this. And actually, as I'm looking at the camera, um, this is a little bit more flat in person than it is on the film, just so you know. <laughs> and I do have this product, a Sweet Pickens Top Coat, which is a matte finish. Um, water-based sealer and I'm not even really sure where to get this. Um, I, I think the person I bought it from isn't selling it anymore so I'm not sure where you would get this but um, I'm just using it up because I have a lot left and I don't like to waste. So I'm going to be using this on the whole piece after I finish distressing it and um, probably do two coats on the body and then three to four coats on the top just to make sure that we have a nice hard seal um, in case somebody puts like food or wet things on top of this make sure that it that it stays intact so I'm gonna go ahead and get started with the distressing and for that I just have this wet cloth and um, what I'm gonna do is pull my drawers out a little bit my handy dandy screwdriver here if you do it this way, be very careful because you don't want to scratch your paint with the screwdriver. So I'm going to give it a wet distress on the edges. Got kind of like a buildup of paint there. I might actually sand that spot and take the paint off where the cute little keyholes are. I'm going to distress a little bit around where the handles are going to be because that's a natural place where it would get more worn. And the edges of the drawers. So that's kind of the look I'm going for. I'm gonna go ahead and do that on the whole piece and then I'm going to apply my sealer and um, I'll be back with knobs and a big reveal. turned out. I really like the colors and the blending looks great and I couldn't be happier with the raw wood on the top. I just really love that. I'm so glad I didn't stain it and I just left it like it was. Um, I just wanted to say thank you so much for watching my video. Um, I really really appreciate your support and please like and subscribe for more fun videos like this and hit the notifications button so that you don't miss any of my videos and I'll see you soon.